This journey begins on November 9th, 2023, during an as-usual lecture on structural analysis, in which we are assigned the course project. That project is located in the Chitral region of Pakistan, where we had to decide on design options for the roof truss of a warehouse as a consulting engineer to evaluate economical design options. For this reason, we consulted with a field expert, and he suggested that the indeterminate truss is a more economical option in this scenario as compared to the determinate truss. Now the main thing comes, we have been told many times that indeterminate structures are more economical than determinate ones, but still, we have no verification. This time we have to verify that in reality, it's a myth or a reality. Here is our truss diagram. We have started our work with the panel load calculation. Here comes the first problem. The panel length of the given truss is not the same. For the truss with different panel lengths, we have to use area of contribution approach. We have calculated the area of contribution for each panel point, and it came out as 0.433 on the exterior panel point of the truss, rather than 0.5 and 1.0 on the interior panel points of the truss. Then by using ETAB software, we analyzed both of the trusses and cross-checked our analysis by hand calculations. There is about a 4 to 5% difference in hand calculations and software analysis. Here are the results we got from the software analysis. Reactions of determinate truss. Reactions of indeterminate truss. Actual force diagram of determinate truss. Actual force diagram of indeterminate truss. Deflections of the determinate truss with the max deflection, 2.46 in a joint F. Deflections of the indeterminate truss with the max deflection, 0.22 in a joint F. Then we move towards developing the table of forces with modified and most suitable load combinations for the given conditions. In the case of a determinate truss, both compression and stress reversal members are present, and on the other hand, in an indeterminate truss, all the members are compression members. Coming towards the next step is designing members of both trusses. After the member design, we found out that the determinate truss is more economical than the indeterminate truss, as shown by the weight calculation of both trusses, proving the senior's claim wrong. But on the other hand, as we are considering no lateral loads in our case, if we take lateral loads into account, the indeterminate truss shows more stable behavior than determinate truss. And also, it is easy to execute in the field. So, based upon this, we recommended using the indeterminate truss. 